Hi, my name is Oscar and I'm a scientist. In this episode, we're going to meet Davide. He obtained his approval for an I-140 in EB2NIW green car category. As you know, in this channel, we talk about green car categories in which you can self-sponsor. That means that you can file it by yourself without a company sponsoring you and even without lawyers. Davide is an entomologist, a great guy. You're going to meet him now. He'll tell us all about his case, how he got his approval, how he worked his process, and how he answered an RFE successfully. Let's jump into it. All right, David, thank you so much for joining this channel. Thank you, Oscar, for uh, for, for allowing me to, to, to share my experience. Thank you, Oscar. Mm -hmm. So let's um, let's start just, uh, we just met virtually. We, we talk on email, but we don't know each other personally. Um, so let me learn a little bit about yourself, um, your story. How did you get um, in in the US? Because you are in the US, I understand. Uh, what do you do there? What's your background? So then we can get into the green car topic. So first of all, I'm Italian. So I was raised and born in Italy. Um, I got my uh, bachelor and my master in Italy, even though I had a little bit of experience uh, going in South Africa for a couple of months before that, before the, my master. But after uh, my master, after I've obtained uh, my skills, let's say, and after having done a, a little bit of experience uh, in different sectors, uh, academic or para-academic, like uh, museums and stuff, I decided that I wanted to pursue uh, a PhD, which possibly, you know, it's very tough finding uh, uh, funding in Europe, specifically in Italy. And specifically for me, since I'm an entomology, so I study entomologist, so I study insects, it was extremely, extremely painful and uh, so I, by chance, I got in contact with a, a person uh, which was a professor and a researcher in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. uh, Denmark, who told me about a professor here in the US, uh, in Orlando, that was studying the same group of insects that I am studying, that I was studying and I'm still studying. And so, and just, uh, just curious, what, what is the type of insect? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm studying uh, parasitoid wasps, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which are wasps that attack other insects. And so they lay the eggs within other insects. These eggs hatch, the larva uh, starts eating the insects from inside out, and then pupate, and uh, you got the sort of the alien kind of uh, vibe. Yeah, right? I see. It's yeah. like uh, almost last of us, but instead of uh, fungal right. infection, it's, it's with, with wasps. <laughs> exactly, one hundred percent. Yes, and um, I'm 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 a I'm a taxonomist as well, so I describe new species, and I'm a, one of the few that that is an expert on on a specific subfamily. So I really wanted to continue on that, specifically studying then morphology and evolution, evolutionary morphology, right, mm -hmm. and so uh i simply sent an email they told uh, she told me uh, my supervisor told me that yes uh, she had an opportunity for me so i applied to the school the school accepted me and i entered first as an at one student mm -hmm. and then since i got married uh, i switched to the j1 so my wife could work as well otherwise we would be extremely poor <laughs> okay and so, so you, you already saw two letters of the uh, immigration alphabet. F and exactly. J. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. But they were extremely easy to get, right? You have mm -hmm. sponsored by the university, you are non immigrant status. So for me, it was extremely easy. Yeah. I didn't have any trouble on that. Yeah. Yeah. But why the green card? Um, it's easy to get those visas, but what takes you to that level of thinking? Well, now I need something else. So my, my dream job would be working within. Uh, a collection, an entomological collection, uh, like there are, like the Smithsonian, to give you an idea, mm -hmm. right? Or to work for agency that, uh, how can I say, allow you to do the type of work that I that I enjoy, which is identifying insects and uh, working with morphology. Of course, I'm not uh, 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 putting aside the idea of becoming academic, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but substantially to work on those first two groups, big groups of, of, of jobs, I needed to have a, a, a green card. So I quickly realized when I came here that the job market was much bigger. And without the green card, there 
the job market was small. And so yeah. I decided, how can I get there and be able to, even for a short period, maybe uh, to be employed and do whatever I like. That's a good, a very good um, reason to access a different pool of jobs that, that you may not have that access easily. Um, that's the struggle of, of immigrants in visas that, well, your visa depends on an employer or academic institution, and you may not easily, you know, when, when you go and apply for jobs, they may say, mm, do you need sponsorship? And that's the end of the story, right? So Exactly. And many of these agencies, maybe they work for the state or for the federal agency, and they cannot sponsor uh, my visa uh, or the green card, right? And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so I cannot do it anyway, or I can do it only for the time being of my uh, visa, mm -hmm. the J1, right? So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you looked into EB2 and AW, and um, you ended up hiring a lawyer, right? Yes. So uh, I started trying to understand what I could do, and at the beginning, I, I, I check out the EB1 uh, right green card, uh, but because I didn't know exactly uh, what what are the different options and getting to know a person that was working one of these agencies but was English British. I asked him, I said, well, yeah, yeah, no, I did the NIW, uh, EB2 NIW, and and that's where I everything started, and I started looking into it. Before hiring a lawyer, though, I got to know your channel, uh, mm -hmm. that for me, it is, and it was and still is, the best done in, in terms of clarification for immigrants exactly on the different steps, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when i understood that i could do it because if people did it uh, by themselves applying uh, independently i thought okay i can do it as yeah. well um but i didn't want to do it uh, by myself because <laughs> i feel like i'm an idiot and so <laughs> well we'll get into that because i think uh, there's plenty of evidence to say otherwise based on your profile but continue <laughs> i start looking at different lawyers but i wasn't convinced because um Everybody was like either a professional, a huge professional, or was already done with his PhD, with their okay. PhD. So for me, it was like, okay, can I do it uh, no matter what? And looking at different uh, lawyers' profile and, uh, you know, successful story, mm -hmm. I saw that there are some cases of PhD candidate or student that actually uh, get their uh, green card. So, I, st uh, I contacted one lawyer that seems to be, one law firm that seems to be pretty nice and they offer me a good deal. Um, yeah. By the way, it was really interesting because they uh, proposed me something discounted without recommendation letters. So they send my application without any recommendation letters. Oh, wow. wow, interesting. With, yes, it was. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. I said, wow, that's incredible. So in two months, they were able to prepare the case. Nice. So uh, overall, you were happy with your decision of going with these lawyers specifically, right? Yes, I'm not sure if I can uh, name them, but yes, I was. You, I was... you can, uh, if you want to, you can. No, they are Ellis Porter, uh, mm -hmm. and they are uh, based in Michigan. It's possibly yeah. one of one of the one of the biggest... best known, yeah, in the right. in the space, particularly for NIW. Yeah. Now it's yeah. good to to say it if you want to, because that's a comment that people will absolutely drop in the comment section so i was yeah. happy uh, but i received an rfe uh, mm -hmm. which was uh, kind of a bummer for me and uh, i was sort of desperate when i received the yellow yeah. card right yeah um so, and because uh, yeah yeah no sorry i i was interested so uh, before we get into that um <laughs> and i know that in these conversations we go back and forth let's first touch on um what was the main type of evidence that you added in your original petition and then you can tell us what did you do in response to that rfe so so it's a little bit more structured so i usually touch on two prongs uh pr i mean for the general eb2 you have a master so that that right. was no problem you don't have a phd uh, again another person here in, in the channel that is disproving that um, myth that you must have one uh, you are working towards it, but you have a lot of other stuff. So before getting into that, prong number one, endeavor. Endeavor and why is important for the US? What we did, right, they, they sent me um, a sort of a format that I need to answer why it is important. Uh, send me, they sent me a few examples and substantially we were able to 
frame it in a way that my insects are extremely important for agriculture, for instance, right? So my first uh, idea is I am continuing with my research for in the future, right? And this kind of creature are extremely important for the agriculture all across the United States. And therefore, it would be a shame not to have me being an expert on, on them since we don't have enough experts. Mm -hmm because we don't have it uh, actually in yeah, the US yeah. on that specific group. And they're extremely important, they're extremely biodiverse. And so then yeah. they frame it also in a way that uh, it's extremely important for the study of biodiversity. And right now for the US and the federal government is extremely important, the protection of nature, conservation, and all these uh, yeah. different things, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yes. I, I like how, what you're saying because uh, usually in that national importance, we don't just focus on one uh, right. one thing. We try to see all the ramifications. So you're talking about uh, agriculture. I'm sure they talked about food security. And then yeah. you talk about biodiversity in general. Sometimes we go from more general to more specific or vice versa, but we touch on a lot of different things. Sometimes even we mention STEM, if you work on STEM, because exactly. you will help the the competitiveness of the US in, in a STEM field, for example. So so that's good to hear. Yes, and then uh, the last thing was uh, the study, the simple uh, advancement of uh, the study of evolution, which was an important task also for uh, for this, according to the uh, to the lawyer, because it, it entails that it's not just something practical, but also something like you said, to to have the STEM field within the US to be the best across the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is something that, I mean, if you look at the USAS policy manual, they have a specific section on STEM. So I always recommend, you know, if you're on STEM, you know, by all means, mention it, uh, put it there literally because they like it. And right. when we know they like something, we have to use it, you know. Right. Yes. So, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, national importance um, is clear that, that what you're doing and, and you have um, a proven record that that we are going to get into it now. Um, so it should have been relatively easy to prove. Sometimes USAIS may not agree. We'll, we'll see if if that was a point of contention in your RFE or not. But but you, I'm sure they did the best to to create that first prong for you. Second prong um, here. Let me um, make a couple of comments because you sent me your CV yesterday. I was looking at it. And the first thing I thought is, man, this guy is actually an EV1. It's not an EV2 <laughs> <and> IW. <W. laughs> because uh, okay, we said that you are not a PhD, you are a PhD candidate, but you have such a, an ex extensive background uh, with so many accomplishments that um, I have to say here, kudos to you because uh, you have a, a very strong profile. So tell me a few of those things that were important for, for you to show I'm well positioned to do this. Uh, yes, well, thank you, first of all, Oscar. I mean, I'm, I'm flattered. I, I've never thought uh, I could go for an EB1, but I thought that NI, NIW would be awesome. Um, so the what the lawyer told me to do is, of course, uh, citation records. Since I'm applying more uh, towards a more academic kind of vibe, um, citation records. Uh, by that time, my citation records was increasing steadily, exponentially, right? And then my uh, publication record, which was above average for a mm -hmm. PhD student, uh, at least in my field, right? I counted 12 uh, publications, so... Uh, yeah, right now there are 14 because I have also one book chapter that I, I, I was... Yeah, but uh, but yes, uh, yeah, when I applied, uh, possibly I had 10, something like this, right? right? I had seven when I applied, for example, okay. to give you okay. that perfect, yeah. Perfect, fantastic. and. Uh, Citation, um, that one, and then they uh, uh, also made me sign, uh, ask my supervisor to sign a letter in which I participated uh, in research for an NSF grant, right? Mm -hmm. So these three uh, main things, and then of course, everything else that could have been useful, like I'm academic editor. I'm an editor for a small journal, local journal. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been reviewer for several journals. Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, 
Yeah, yes. I, I, I saw that, that you are a reviewer, but you're also on the board of, of one as a, an editor or, or in yes. some sort of capacity there. And that is extremely important because you show that you are judging the work of others. And, exactly. and again, that's a criteria that, that they, they really like. Exactly. I, I was surprised that I didn't have to do any recommendation letters. Um, and so that one, I was when I when we applied, I was a little bit worried that that could um, uh, work against me. But uh, yeah. actually, the 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 lawyer told me, no, we, you are not required to do it. And according to us, your CV and your evidences evidence yeah. are already enough for yes. the application. Yes, I I I agree. But I already told you. I think you could have gone for the higher category. However, if somebody asks me that, I always say, you know. <laughs> please get some recommendation letters right. just the safest thing to do so i'm surprised the lawyers um were so confident not in you uh, because you do have a great profile but they were confident in the process itself which sometimes i'm very skeptical about the process right. yeah so i have to tell you right now looking at back uh, i was glad that they did that because my priority date was sooner rather than later mm -hmm. and and since now we are uh, we are a little bit worried about when this new priority today will become current again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was I was really happy for it because we send it off um, and they receive it the 22nd of December, 2022, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, with the recommendation letters, possibly it would have gone another two months. Have taken longer. Yeah, yeah. But don't say this because then the no, 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 please, like... <laughs> no, please, <laughs> do like, your recommendation. I... Yesterday there was a person that asked me that and said do, do the, the recommendation letters. Yes, no, please, please. In your in your case it worked out. Um, we'll get into the timeline in a bit. Uh, I yeah. just want to summarize really quickly other achievements that you had. You mentioned grants. Uh, I also saw you have guest lectures, which also is a very nice way to show. Look, I'm an expert. They invited me to present in in prestigious um, institutions. You have the papers, book chapters. You have um, uh, presentations at conferences, so you are active in your professional field. You are also active because you have memberships, um, including an honor society. You have papers, you, you are reviewers. So, I mean, you check uh, all the boxes. So you have an extremely um, um, consistent and, and robust profile for this and for EB1 as well. So now I'm curious, what was the RFE about? So that was in interesting. So after uh, we sent it off, I waited and I received the RFE, which substantially crushed all my <laughs> hopes because not not a single one of the three prongs was accepted. Wow. So you know that the third usually is accepted by uh, when the first one and the second is accepted usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not even the first one. Uh, only partially the first one, which is the, the substantial uh, merit was accepted. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. That's and not, the case. Yeah. Right, and so uh, the idea is that according to them, uh, my job, my, my my kind of endeavor, is not of national importance. Was not. Mm -hmm. I did not show that, and uh, because it was not. Uh, for, for them, what I was doing, it was more teaching for them rather than mm -hmm. actually research. Mm -hmm. And the evidence were not compelling because I needed to show more strength in citation records and um, and other issues. The problem is that uh, when I read it, I was really scared. And when my lawyer read it, they told me, no, I think that the problem is we know that officer and possibly we we encountered it four times and all the four times uh we saw um this kind of rfe and mm -hmm. apparently they were also a little bit angry because there were some huge mistakes in the uh endeavor uh, so my uh, the first prong they were mm -hmm. keep saying that usually you need to have multiple advanced degree for the uh, acceptance of the NIW. But the lawyer pushed back on it and said, no, that's not true. You just need no. one of either a PhD or a master. But they were saying, yeah, you need to have more. So uh, then uh, the there was other issues. And one of the main that was also funny is that, that possibly they copy and paste uh, from another NIW application. Because I've seen that happening. Yeah. 
and I, at the beginning since you know i was i was reading this and i was not understanding what was happening i thought it was an example of some sort i'm not sure but yeah. it was a completely different name uh, in the and so uh, even there my my lawyer pushed back um the uscis also said that even though i participated in the into the nsf grant mm -hmm. i was not the principal investigator so i was okay. not the one getting the money Mm -hmm. But also there, they push back and say that's not important because he, no matter what, was hired mm -hmm. to get this job done uh, yeah. that without him could have not been done, right? Yeah. Um, and by that time, though, that works in my favor, I think, is that I increase my uh, citation records mm -hmm. and also yeah. my publication records because I published mm -hmm. a couple of papers more or, or one more. And so yeah. we show all that together. And... Uh, I asked for, oh yeah, also the editorial uh, evidence was not accepted because they could not understand the journal. And so yeah. I asked the chief editor to send me a letter saying what I was doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the citation records, I asked a professor in Berkeley uh, to write me a letter uh, saying, well, this is a good uh, citation record for a PhD student. Yeah, and, uh, that's and very, that's very good. Uh, very good so yeah <laughs> yeah because i mean i come from from a graduate school and i have to say that it is good it, it's also true that the citation records and number of publications vary from field to field exactly. um, so it's uh, a lot of times it is unfair for certain fields to say you know maybe three publications in a certain field is excellent and in another field is really bad you know so I think uh, the strategy there was right. Use a letter to provide that validation from an expert to say, okay, I evaluated this profile and you know it is definitely above average. You know, And that's one of the purposes we use letters for as validation to help us strengthen certain things in, in the application. Yes, exactly. And I have to tell you, the lawyer did a pretty amazing job. I was not expecting, uh, they, they were extremely professional. Uh, first mm -hmm. of all, they prepared the case very rapidly. But not only that, they were able to go uh, into the Google portals, for instance, Google Scholar, and pull out also mm -hmm. the impact factor of the journal itself yeah. uh, by yeah. themselves, which was incredible for me yeah. uh, that they were able to do that. They are really specialized, I think. And yeah, that's good. So um, and, and, you know, here sometimes we put a negative note on lawyers, but there are lawyers that actually do a very, very good job. And it is also important to to say that it's not all bad about lawyers right no i i, I my experience was was perfect uh, mm -hmm. uh, i think that a lot of, of of bad reviews come from the fact that uh they, they ask you to work as well right so mm -hmm. your personal statement yeah. is important and you need to do it and and so i did it and I, substantially i wrote two personal statements one for the first and one for the rfe and if they were like four pages long, each one of them. So take that and use yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and that makes sense. I mean, I, I will never criticize that part. Like the lawyers are not experts in what you do. You are the expert on yourself and your field. So it is normal that you have to put quite a bit of work, even if, if you hire a lawyer. The lawyer is yes. the person that will give the final touch, the structure, and, and make sure that everything looks good for USAS. But without your input uh, is going to be um, right. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, the, the reason why I went for the lawyer is because, well, they took out 85% uh, of the work possibly because mm -hmm. they knew already what, what I needed and they have everything on, on the checklist, right? And yeah. then because I was not trusting myself in being extremely precise with what to send. And since this was sort of time sensitive for me, mm -hmm because I wanted to get it done before the end of my PhD, so mm -hmm. I could apply for a job. I didn't want it to get a denial and be worried to reapply again later. Yeah, cool. So let me uh, review your timeline. So yeah. before even the green card, when, when did you um, come to the US? Uh, what year was that? Uh, so I came into the US August 2018. 18, okay. And, and then when did you start your process when did you submit when did you get the rp you don't yeah. have to be specific but more or less yeah so i started my process i contacted the lawyer in october 2022 mm -hmm. and by 
December, we sent off uh, the RFE that they received the 22nd of December 2022, right? Okay. So two months later, they were able to prepare the entire case. Okay. Um, after that, uh, took a long time. Uh, of course, checking every day, like 10 times a day. <laughs> Just <laughs> the Yeah, I mean. Uh, um, and, and were then, you under premium processing or regular? No, no, no. I decided yeah. not because uh, since they were uh, back, they had a okay. long backlog. I, it was not worth it. Yeah, because you were right there when the backlog started accumulating. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. I I, I did not understood it at, at first, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't want to pay two thousand five hundred, and then there was another more reason not to pay. It. Right. Yeah, and that's that's what, in my opinion, that's the best choice. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes. If you're not time sensitive uh, so much, uh, that's the best way, I think. And then I waited two months and a half, uh, mostly. So around end of March, I received uh, the RFE physical part. So mm -hmm. two weeks before I received the actual uh, online. Uh, receipt let's put it this way but then mm -hmm. i received the actual paper one with the, the entire explanation mm -hmm. and that's when we started uh drafting the rfe that lasted one month again mm -hmm. so by may the 15th of may 18th of may we were able to to send it off to file mm -hmm. it and then in one month and three weeks something like this i received the approval of it mm -hmm. complete nice. approval yeah 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 it was a, yeah it's a short timeline um lately we are seeing that and and always the rfe part is usually very fast also at the end so uh, you got the news uh what was your reaction <laughs> well my Were reaction was it? like yeah sort of i was like oh wow this is really happening you know <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah because i i kept also in that rfe period uh looking and checking my status mm -hmm. 10, Every 15 times. Day, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I was like really shocked. Uh, and mm -hmm. still, it's, 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 I, I didn't realize it fully. So, um, yeah. And that's when I emailed you and said, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I thank you, by the way. I thank you and others that, that reach out to me. You know, people that I don't know at all, and suddenly I get the email like, "Oh, Oscar, I, I once I bought your material, or or I watch your videos, and and I got it, and they want to thank." Some people like you even volunteer to come on the channel, which is extremely nice. Uh, but regardless, it makes me uh, very very happy to hear these stories. Let's uh, start wrapping up. So now you are in the in the moment where. You got that one for the approval. Now you are in this backlog. You are just waiting for adjusting the status whenever you can, right? Exactly. Yeah. So right now I'm preparing the adjustment of status already. So mm -hmm. it, it would be easier uh, later to send it off whenever this become current. Uh, yeah. Right now we can do it, right? Uh, so I'm just waiting for the moment. The hope is that in October, uh, mm -hmm. everything will, will clear out and we have a current status or at least uh, a, a good priority day for me. Yeah, that's the hope that October next uh, fix, fiscal year starts 2024 and hopefully things will get more fluid. And and I like this. This is a tip that I give to everyone. If you are in your situation, even if you are not current, start preparing the adjustment of status package. So whenever the moment comes, you just have it ready and boom, send it and, and done. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Any tip that you have, any advice um, to people that are thinking about starting the process or they have started either by themselves or with a lawyer, anything that you want to share about this process? So my my my, my biggest tip is that even if you receive an RFE, don't get really scared. Sometimes it seems to be common for when you find the officer that possibly is new to the job and still doesn't really understand the process. Mm -hmm. And also, I heard of uh, lawyers that when their client receive an RFE, they drop the case, mm. uh, which was interesting for me. Uh, my lawyers didn't do it. Actually, they were really uh, angry after this. So it was really <laughs> interesting to see that. Yeah, uh, no. And, so and, and I always say that is your second chance to actually exactly. get the approval. A lot of people get approval after RFE. So. Exactly. And so I would say, trust yourself, trust your uh, uh, background, your CV, make sure that everything in your CV is correct, that it's not uh, uh, too pompous, too, uh, you know, hyperbolic. 
but I would say, uh, and uh, it was my biggest fear at the beginning, be slightly arrogant when you write the R uh, the R RFE or the, the first, because I was like, I don't like this. I'm not like that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the lawyer told me, no, 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 we need to boost it a little bit yeah. more, frame it this, in a different way. This is not the time to be humble. You know, exactly. Just, and and I, I felt the same way. It's so awkward to write things about you in such superlative terms, you know, you know, I'm extraordinary, I'm exceptional. We most people we're not used to talk like that about ourselves, but this is the time to do it. Yes, and I would say, yeah, that's the main point. And also possibly this is doable. This is doable. Mm -hmm. It's not an impossible task, even if it seems to be like this, because I would say that the immigration the US likes to put a lot of uh, barriers against immigration but i would say you can do it it's doable and it's not that difficult uh, uh when you do it and also when you achieve it uh, right uh, you can look back and say well it was it wasn't that bad yeah um, it, I, I i compare it with the phd actually it's like <laughs> while you're doing it it's like it feels like super long and, and tedious but then, you know, you look things in different perspectives, like, well, I, I got the degree or in this case, I got the green card. So, you know, it pays off. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. And if you if you can and if you are not still sure, at least gather evidence right now. So whenever it's time, you already have uh, everything prepared. For me, that was one big thing, because when the lawyer uh, sent me the checklist to evidence to send them, I already had everything in one folder that I si simply uh, upload in one night uh, mm -hmm. or a couple of days. Yeah, that's a, that's a good advice. Yeah, I didn't definitely I didn't have that, and I spent a lot of time creating folders. You know, this type of evidence, this other type. Yeah, but you didn't big... have your own video by then. I had <laughs> <That's> yours. <laughs> <laughs> I was far from there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it um, to me it helped me that I had a couple of friends that that um, had gone through the process EB1 and EB2. So they gave me their folder so I could see, OK, this is the way they organize it. So I'm going to start doing that. So when the time comes and I want to write that I'm ready. And yeah, Fantastic. I wish I wish there was a channel. Back then. Exactly. No. And uh, I wanted just to conclude saying thank you for opening that channel. It helps a lot tremendously. Also, to give you a sort of timeline for me, it was like, OK, I don't get any response so far, but at least I can watch his video and, and really understand <laughs> what's going on and keeping also on track on a few things. I didn't understood the visa bulletin before. Now I, I can read it by myself. And so the lawyer sent me updates. Yeah, I know that already. <laughs> <laughs> now you are the expert. Yeah. I mean, come on, guys. I like that. Yeah, I mean, you even understand the word retrogression. That, uh, exactly. <laughs> it's not used anywhere else. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Davide, for your time, for, for your advice to others. I think this is going to be really helpful. And again, congratulations and, and good luck in this time that is now starting for you as soon to be permanent resident in the US. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you very much for allowing me to share my experience. Thank you. If you are serious about EB2NIW, you should check out my website, eb2niw.info or eb2niwespanol.info if you speak Spanish. And there you can find a lot of information, including my real I140 petition and especially my online course, which will walk you through the whole process. It, it includes also my petition, so you can have that reference and you can build your case by yourself without using lawyers. If you are interested, in the other green card category in which you can self-petition, that's EB1A, go to eb1greencard.info to find similar information, but for that other green card category. Without uh, further delay, I say thank you for your support, for being here one more day, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, good luck in your green card journey.